G'day guys, Ziggy D here, and in this video I want to explain what I understand so far about the Betrayal Syndicate mechanics, the Syndicate board here, and the things you can do with it, and how you can manipulate it to uh, increase your rewards, and uh, basically just how this works. What, you, what even are we looking at here? I spent most of the first day experimenting with these mechanics, so I'm starting to get a pretty good grasp on how most of it works. So let's go through the basics of what is on this screen first and what these things mean. So the first thing to know is that there are four branches of the Syndicate. As you can see, the Transportation, Fortification, Research, and Intervention here. Each one of these shapes and Syndicate members here represents a safe house, which is kind of like the uh, headquarters of those specific branches. And then this one up here, this mysterious one up here, is the leader of the Syndicate and the actual Syndicate headquarters overall. So the core idea here is that you're trying to get information or intelligence to progress this bar, fill it up, and that'll allow you to raid one of the safe houses. Then when you raid one of the safe houses, you'll capture the safe house leader, so the person that's currently in here, and they'll be able to give you intelligence that'll lead to the location of the headquarters itself. Yeah, there's three stages of rewards in this league. The first is what you get from the actual syndicate members when you just encounter them out in the field, and that varies depending on what you do. And then there is the rewards you get from raiding safe houses themselves. And that depends entirely on who will be in the safe house, their rank, and what they happen to be carrying at the time. We'll get into that in a second. And then the third tier will be the headquarters itself, which I don't know too much about yet, but we'll discover that as we go. And later on, I'll probably make a more complete guide once I understand everything about the mechanics of this. So let's just quickly go over the features that you can see here, because this information on this board is very helpful and uh, useful for you in making decisions. So if you mouse over the person, you can see uh, just who they are generally. The italics text down there that says transporting quality modifying currency is the reward that they are currently carrying. That's the theme of the reward. Sometimes it's pretty obvious. So for this one, quality modifying cur currency, you'll get things like, I don't know, armor, scraps, and GCPs. So uh, that's pretty specific. Like we can see for Verici here, stock at modifying orbs, it'll be jewelers and fusing orbs and chromatics, that sort of thing. So most of them are pretty obvious, but sometimes they're a little bit cryptic. More, usually the cryptic ones are more kind of like a special themed one for that particular person. So for example, booby trapping stashes on Riker here is a little bit, hmm, what does that kind of mean? Um, and I think I've done one with him where you get to select a reward and you have like a timer and you get to select a reward in that time. There's the other one that you may have seen in one of my previous highlights where uh, you get to spend an unlimited amount of currency or a huge amount of currency uh, as much as you can in like 20 seconds. So there's some pretty fun and interesting stuff that you can get. The other things to note here, on the left side you can see an item. This item is not like to do with the rewards of the Syndicate member that I, that I don't understand that there's any connection there to the rewards. All that seems to be is an upgrade that this person has secured that makes them more dangerous. So this person will create unholy relics. And over here we've got creating unholy sentinels. Elrian has some attack speed boots, so that boosts these attack speeds. So that just literally makes them more threatening, and they usually get those as rewards for uh, good service, usually when you execute them and they gain a rank. The stars that you see up here in the top right, or down the bottom when you mouse over them, is their current rank. It starts at zero, so the plebeians over here that don't have anything associated with them. One star, two star, and three star. You can see at the moment Elder Elrian is three star. I haven't seen any higher ranks than that. The other things that you can see are the pieces of rope, and they look a little bit confusing once you get a lot of relationships forming. Yellow means that they are a direct underling of the person that they're connected to. So Janus is the direct boss of Jorgen here, and the bosses of, you know, the boss of the headquarters is obviously the boss of each of the intervention members. So you can, this can chain as well, so you could have like Janus being the boss of Jorgen, and then someone under here could be like an underling of Jorgen. The green lines are friendship or like positive connections between the people, so those people are essentially allies. And what that means in terms of a gameplay sense, primarily, is that they will appear to help each other when you encounter them. So if you're, for example, raiding transportation and Jorgen is leading it, it that fled, who is his friend, may appear to help him in that fight. That can be a good thing for you, firstly, it makes it more dangerous, so it can be dangerous if you do a fight and all of a sudden your three extra people appear. But it can be a good thing for you because it gives you more chances to interact with this board. As you can see, for example, I just took out a fort and we had what looked like one person originally and two other people appeared to help them. So that's because of those friendship connections. But what that means is I have three opportunities here, three separate opportunities to do something on the Syndicate board, which gives us a lot more chance to uh, influence our rewards and gain intelligence. So that's a very good thing, typically. The red line means that they're enemies of each other. And uh, 
I am still discovering the exact mechanics of what that, that what that does. I think there's some interesting things we might be able to do with that mechanic later on. Mostly, though, it seems to be uh, something that stops them from working together in a positive sense, obviously, but uh, it may allow them to do things like, let's say, you make a deal with Vagan uh, for him to eliminate Haku and kick him out of the Syndicate entirely. So using the red lines, we may get opportunities to remove people from the Syndicate, which is helpful if they uh, maybe don't have a reward that we like, or if they're just someone who's particularly dangerous. So maybe in Hardcore, there's someone who gives you a lot of grief. Uh, I hear Janus, for example, or Janus over here is uh, particularly threatening. So uh, kicking them out of the Syndicate could, could be to your benefit. So what are we actually trying to do here? As I mentioned, like the simple thing is gaining intelligence to try and work your way up to the head, uh, safe houses and then to the headquarters itself. And that's the very like top level thing that you're always trying to do. But uh, besides that, you're trying to get certain people into these headquarters and then make sure that their rewards will be as good as possible. And how do we do that? Primarily, that's going to be through positioning and ranks. So the rank that they have will uh, di dictate where they are on the board. Like they'll move up as they gain ranks. And also to influence the rewards that you have. You see Gravitius doesn't have any like text here. It doesn't have any italics text. That means he has no reward associated with him. So we're not going to get anything good from Gravitius, really. Um, he's just someone that we can potentially start to manipulate and push into a more useful area. Jorgen, on the other hand, is uh, rank 1 and has some talismans. So if we, encounter, if we do a transportation safe house and Jorgen is there then uh, we're going to get some talismans, but not very many, maybe not very particularly good rewards because he's only rank one. Elrion over here being rank three and being in the safe house, he's the safe house leader, so he's always going to be there, uh, means that we're going to get the best possible rewards from him. And it does seem like from what I've seen, the best possible rewards are from someone being the leader of a safe house. So they'll be guaranteed to be in there and also being rank three. It seems like there's an extra bonus, especially if they're the leader of the safe house and you can manipulate that, which I'll get into in a bit. So what you're trying to do is gain intelligence to get this bar mostly filled typically, and then make sure that the people when you go to actually raid the safe house are as high a rank as possible, and there's as many people in there as possible. In terms of who is actually going to appear in the safe house if you raid it, it seems to be people that are directly connected will pretty much always appear. I've had that be 100% of the case. So if I raid transportation, you, both Jorgen and Janus are going to be here. So I'm pronouncing his name differently each time, by the way. <laughs> so they're both going to be there. But I have had situations where other people have appeared, and I still haven't quite figured out the exact criteria that leads to that. But it also seems likely, for example, if I have multiple people that are directly linked, like here, Verici, Rin, and It That Fled, if I raid Fortification, they're all likely to be there. But I've had situations where I've had some extra appear, and I'll try and figure that out for the final guide once I'm able to make that. The easiest way to get them to be in one of these uh, safe houses is to give them ranks. So anything that will increase their rank will push them up and make them uh, find a location. So if they don't already have a location, they're likely to gain one. So Gravitius here doesn't have anything going on, right? So if we are to execute him, he will gain a rank. The reason for this is because it's an immortal syndicate. They'd be brought back from the dead. So for them being executed is like the best possible outcome. They hate it, but it gives them a rank up because of their loyalty. They are rewarded with a rank. You'll notice because he doesn't have a current position, if we look at the board, he's just down here off by himself. He's currently doing nothing. He has some friendships, but that's about it. If we execute him, he'll gain a rank, but he'll also move to fortification. So he's going to move to one of these places, and that seems to be somewhat random. So what we can do is here, uh, take this opportunity to execute him, give him a rank, and then we'll see what rewards he has to offer. And this seems to change each time. There's usually a theme for each person, like it's obvious for Ichi, will often have stuff to do with sockets, but uh, their rewards do seem to change uh, each time they are kind of have a rank versus other times that you may have encountered them. So let's go ahead and execute Gravitius here, and he will gain a rank. And then we can see he's amassing divination cards. So that's a pretty good reward. And he's now also kind of in part of fortification as well. So potentially fortification is getting pretty stacked here. So from here on out, in terms of my strategy moving forwards for fortification, I'm going to want to try and rank all of these guys up as much as possible. But I also do need to gain some extra intelligence. So how do we do that? The primary way of gaining intelligence is actually to interrogate someone. So that puts them in prison down here. It takes them off the board and out of play for three turns. Turns are effectively an encounter, so three encounters. And you'll gain intelligence based on their rank. So Elrion being rank three and the leader of a safe, uh, safe house is going to uh, give me 11 intelligence per turn, which is quite a lot. But if I were to interrogate someone like Gruff, I'm only going to get like one intelligence per turn, not much at all. When you do interrogate them, they'll lose a rank though. So that's like the trade-off there. So typically what I've found to be like a good strategy is to try and get them a couple ranks. 
see if the reward that you ha they have that you like, see if you care about them so effectively. If you don't care about someone's reward, so let's find someone we don't really care about. Maybe I don't really care about rare maps because I'm like, eh, whatever, I don't really care about that right now. Um, I would be happy to interrogate Rin and just use her rank, essentially consume her rank, just to gain some intelligence. So that's fine. And as I said, the amount of intelligence you get is based on their rank. So the strategy seems to be, like, let's say with a fresh um, thing here where we don't have any progress yet, is to get some people in there, get as many people in there as is possible, rank them up as much as possible, so give them, like, rank 2 or 3, and then start interrogating them. They will lose their ranks, but you'll start gaining progress bar, and then as you get towards the end, you can start thinking about who you actually want to be there and who you want to be high rank so you can maximize those rewards when you do raid that particular safe house. So let's just go through my remaining two here. We have Rin and Elrion. So Rin is chilling here, has rare maps. Don't care so much about that. And we also have Elrion, who is rank three of this research center here. Now, taking Elrion out and putting him in prison would remove him as the leader of this. And that would give someone else a chance to take over his position. So since I am pretty happy with Elrion's reward, I want him to stay there. So I might have to do something that's just going to leave him there. So what we can do is we can just, we can have him betray someone else here. And these situations will be contextual based on who else is around. So typically you can't have them do something that will betray the syndicate as a whole if there's a witness. So you'll have to remove the witnesses first. So these these will change if I do something else first. I don't want to imprison him because he'll lose a rank. Even though there's a lot of research, that intelligence there. I don't want to do that because I don't want him to be removed as leader of the headquarters. And I don't want him to be... Uh, losing a rank. So we're going to leave him there. So I could have him betray um, and give one plus rank to research members, minus one rank to fortification members. So that's a lot of loss of rank of fortification members and I don't really need the ranks in research because I don't have many people there. So that's a pretty bad option. So we can actually change that then by going to Rin first. So Rin's options are to imprison her or have her betray Orion. She'll gain three ranks, so she'll instantly become max ranks, but she will lose all, all ranks, and then from then on, Rin and Elrion will be rivals. They'll gain a red line like that. So, again, that's pretty bad, considering Rin's just got rare maps. I don't really want that to happen. Um, and I uh, don't certainly don't want Elrion to lose all of his ranks, because I'm very happy with him how he is. So instead, we're going to just interrogate her. That's our best option here. It might be another option where maybe just executing Ring just to remove her so that we can then make a better deal with Orion. But getting rid of Rin will change our options with Orion. So I'm just going to go ahead and interrogate her. She's now in prison and she's gone. Not, not a witness. Elrion will be able to make a different deal with us. So the bargain here now is, and this is unfortunate, remove Elrion from the Immortal Syndicate. So the bargain is now we can convince him to lead. So this is a little unlucky because we got a particularly awkward situation here. So... In this case, and this sucks, the best thing for me to do is probably just to take the huge amount of intelligence that I can get from him. Really does suck, very unlucky, and uh, maybe just executing Orion as my first choice so that he didn't change would have been the safest play. So if I went all three were there, I probably would have had an option over here to execute Orion. It would have had no impact because he's already max rank, but it would have kept him safe and secure in his position. He would have gone back to just being leader of this particular safe house. So unfortunately, though, we'll take the best option available to us, which is just to interrogate him. Helic has moved up into his location, and Elrion is now giving us 11 intelligence per turn, which is quite a bit of intelligence. It's going to mostly fill up research, probably almost fully fill it up. So what I'm going to be prioritizing from here on out is trying to put some people in research and uh, getting them ranked up. So the other way that you can get people to move around on the board is usually through making bargains with people. Sometimes betrayal will do it as well, but mostly making bargains. So if there's two people, if there's uh, you get someone by themselves, usually you'll get an option to make a bargain, and they might say, "Oh, I'm gonna swap places with someone, or I'm going to convince someone to be my friend and move them over to me." So like I might have a bargain with Thane over here, and he'll be like, "Oh, I'll make friend with Ashling, and uh, she'll come join me in transportation." So that can be a good way to get them there. The other thing to know is that the syndicate members will often drop veiled items. You probably, you might already be familiar with this, but effectively what you do is talk to June whenever you have some of these and take them over in there. The veiled mod is a little swooshy text. Click on veil and you get three options. Selecting one of these options will add it to the item, but also unlock it for crafting. If you already have it unlocked for crafting, it'll gain experience towards a level where it'll get stronger. So I can push this up towards level four and this life mana mod will become more powerful. I'll take the dodge one here and get a little bit of experience for it. This experience seems to be based on kind of like the level of the zone for this. So this is a little bit of a lower level zone, so I didn't get much experience there, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. Now here's one of the interesting little thing that I've noticed is that these guys who don't currently have anything going on will sometimes appear randomly. And I think that is a mechanic to make sure that they be, they get some chance to be seen because otherwise they're not going to appear anywhere. 
So in this case, I did a trans I found a transportation wagon led by Jorgen, and Jorgen isn't direct friends with Guff, yet Guff appeared. And I believe that's just because he doesn't have anything going on right now, so to give him a chance to be interacted with so that you can start doing stuff with him, then uh, he just randomly happened to appear here. And that will happen sometimes. But others I mentioned, the thing that will make them appear at these particular events is if they have uh, a friendship connection with someone, they're more likely to appear alongside of them. Now, I mentioned that one of the ways of gaining intelligence, or well, the main way of gaining intelligence, was actually imprisoning them, but sometimes you can make bargains, and often they'll make, they'll make bargains to give you intelligence for other people. So, for example, Jorgen might uh, make a bargain to give you some intelligence about fortification, and that'll sometimes happen if they're a guest as well. So, if, so if something is almost full and you don't really want to do anything that's going to influence their ranks, like they're all perfect, then you might be able to gain that last little bit of intelligence that you need by making a bargain with someone else. But that's pretty random, so sometimes you might instead have to sacrifice someone's rank, uh, lessening your rewards a little bit to get that final little push of intelligence. Just kind of a little bit of a strategy thing you have to make play around with. Let's just have a look what we have here, Jorgen and Guff. I probably want the chance for Guff to be added to transportation because I only have one person here so far. So executing him will give him a rank and add him to transportation since this was a transportation encounter. I can imprison him for very little intelligence, not really worth doing. The other option is Jorgen, imprisoned for a bit more intelligence, or just rank him up here. Probably what I want to do is get a few people here, and give these, giving these people jobs, putting them in good locations, is better than them just sitting on the board doing nothing. So, we want to take that opportunity here to execute Guff, and he's now added to Fortification. You can see he's gained an item, he gets poison on hit now, and he's wagering on item worth, which is uh, potentially a pretty good one. I think that might be the crafting one. Jorgen's deal will change now, because he doesn't have a witness. He can be made to do a bargain. Jorgen and Verici become trusted, so they become friends. And you'll gain some fortification intelligence. So this is the example of what I was talking about. We can gain a little bit of fortification intelligence here. We don't want him to lose a rank, so this is actually a pretty good bargain for us. We gain a little bit of free intelligence over here, and it'll create a new relationship that could work to our advantage in the future. So that's a good example there. It's a shame about Elrian, but uh, we'll recover from that. It's fine. When we're encounter here, just to see if there's anything else, like I mentioned, uh, a good thing to keep in mind is that uh, you want to, if you've got a reward that you like, then you want to preserve that. So in this case, he's only Haku's rank one. He's got stealing strongbox scarabs. Strongbox scarabs seems very good. Adding extra strongbox to, to maps could be very nice. So uh, imprisoning him here, although it would give me some intervention intelligence, would make him lose that rank, and he'll lose that reward. Next time he gains a reward, it could be something different. That's at least been the way that it's worked for me. So in this case, I probably don't really want to be doing this because I want him to stay there, and I don't want him to lose that rank. I don't want him to become a plebeian over here. So we probably want to at least rank him up once more so that if we do choose to interrogate him later, he will at least still be rank one, and you'll maintain that reward, and then we can build him up again later on. Haku and Hillik um, become trusted for research intelligence. That's great. Perfect. So we'll do that. Build a new relationship and gain a little bit of free research intelligence. You'll notice that now that I've done a few encounters, the people that I imprison that I'm getting gaining intelligence from, all of their turns have expired. I've gained all the intelligence from it, and then have now left the prison. Elrian, who was rank three in the leader of research, he remained in research, but he's now rank two. But now he's the underling of Hillock, and I love that Hillock is the lead of heat research, which is just hilarious. So I'll have maybe another opportunity to still uh, rank up Elrian and uh, do research and still have him be rank 3 and appear in the research. So I'll still be able to get his reward, but I think the leader's reward, the actual person in there, is has an extra bonus applied to it. So it might not be as good as it was. So unfortunately, I'm probably just going to get glass blowing stuff off Hillock, which is whatever. What we might do is though, next time we encounter Hillock, I might be able to interrogate him, removing him from there, gaining a bunch more information, but then giving someone else a chance to move back up in there, possibly Elrian. Now, I do, I did believe that it was based on who was just underneath them would take their position, and we saw that happen with Hillock, but sometimes also it seems to have been a little random, so I'm not exactly sure the direct mechanics as to who will take over from someone when they are removed. The other thing to know is that when you actually run the safe house, you'll notice we have a safe house run here available now, when you actually run the safe house, they, all the people that are in there will have all their ranks stripped from them after you complete it, and they'll all be removed from it. They'll all become plebeians down here, and some new a new person will move in and take over, and you'll build it up again, and then the cycle continues. In this case here, I have an option to run the safe house for fortification, but I don't necessarily need to do it straight away. Um, I'm not sure what happens if you leave this for a while. Someone has said that you might lose some progress on it. It might go down to like 80% or something. I'm not 100% sure. I can't verify. If that happens, though, that's not a big deal because we can either just take a little bit of intelligence here from here and get pretty bad rewards because these guys are all only rank 1. The rewards won't be that good. So I might leave this, gain a few more ranks on these people next time I encounter them, and then run the safe house once I'm able to again. 
So you'll have an option there if you want to delay it and try and improve the rewards or just run it straight away and build up more uh, information towards the actual headquarters. The option, the choice is yours there effectively. So I think this is overall a really interesting system. Hopefully that uh, gave you guys some insights into how it works. There's still a lot to discover, I think, in terms of how some of the specific mechanics work and some of the things you can do and what each person's rewards are available. But uh, I'm starting to feel like I can actually have some control over this and I can pretty well dictate for the most part who will be where and what they'll be giving me. So uh, that's pretty good stuff. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys find this helpful. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.